So I picked up this Corsair H60, all in one liquid cooler, a little while ago, and I thought I should make a video on how I recondition AIOs for anyone interested. Most people simply discard these after the system starts overheating, not knowing that most of the time they simply need some rather basic maintenance to get them performing like new again. First things first, we'll need to weigh the unit to get a fill target at the end. More than this is fine, less by more than 5 to 10 grams, not so much. And I scratched it. This particular unit has some shrink wrap around the tubing which has perished over time, indicating it's been a while since it was originally purchased. We're just gonna get rid of it as it's only decorative. Next, we're just gonna get the screwdriver and... Uh, no. It uh, doesn't work. There we go, third time lucky. I really should get an iFixit kit instead of busting on my big toolkit every time with the proper screwdriver. This is getting ridiculous. After all the screws are out, very carefully pry out the cold plate, making sure not damage anything. There we go, it's out. Rub the jet plate. Huh. Okay. There really isn't much to it, just shake out all the liquid that you can. If there is a lot of gunk in there, a special flush fluid may be used to clean it all up. In this case I'll probably just give it a quick rinse of water before refilling. Collect the liquid in a container, as this will actually be discarded as it's usually full of all gunk. I'm kinda bummed out I didn't do a before and after thermal test, as there is nowhere near as much corrosion as I've anticipated. Good job Corsair from years ago. all that bad. There is some corrosion in there but nothing truly major. In this case looks can be deceiving because even a little bit of build up is enough to impede the liquid flow and cause overheating. Next we're just gonna take some alcohol and an old toothbrush and very carefully start scraping away all at that built up corrosion. Be liberal with the alcohol here because it really does help a lot. These sky fins are not as delicate as they seem Still, don't be too aggressive because if you do bend them, the cooler will be ruined. Ah, that looks much better. This is really gonna help with the performance. I'll be using this premix fluid that I've got lying around. Please don't not reuse the one that you took out from the liquid cooler. That will already be too contaminating and you'll simply undo all the work that you put in. Also, it is not really advisable to use colored fluids as those have pigments floating around and do not last as long as the clear stuff. More often than not, instead of corrosion you get clumps of pigment stuck in the fins. In any event, those are meant for more high-end custom water loop setups where you are able to see the liquid flow. I'll be probably covering those in later videos. Filling it back up is actually the most tedious part of the whole process, as you got to pour and shake, then proverbially rinse and repeat until no more liquid can go in. This can take a while. I've occasionally read on various forums that you should take out the seal pins and pour the liquid straight in the rad. I don't think this is actually necessary and besides you run the risk of damaging it as they are not really designed to be taken out and reinserted. As long as you keep your pour tidy and don't spill over the area demarcated by the rubber seal you should be fine. We'll check things at the end to make sure that the fluid has not gone where it wasn't supposed to go to anyway.
At this point it's just a matter of putting the call play back on. Make sure that if it feels like a screw is having a tough time going back in, do not force it as the plastic might get damaged. Take your time and find the thread lead in. Before tightening all the screws properly, please make sure that you weigh the cooler and it is within 5 to 10 grams of the original weight. If you are over, then this is fine. It's definitely a case of do as I say and not as I do, because I actually end up reopening it and pouring in more liquid, although I was only 4 grams out with 3 screws still to go in. <laughs> Lastly, I'm going to take off the top cover and make sure none of the fluid that's just poured in has made its way to the circuit board. Do not assume none spilled out because if it does short out, that little circuit board you might lose the LEDs or the pump or even the header on the motherboard. It's always best to check and wipe it away. This particular unit really was not that dirty. Sometimes corrosion gets so bad it actually clogs the pump and sometimes it even stops it working altogether. This is more often than not rectified by taking the pump out and spraying some alcohol on it and manually turning it until all the gunk is cleared away. If you believe the pump may be clogged, then remove the circuit board and underneath you will find the pump which will have the impeller submerged and the body held down with screws and sealed with an no ring. I believe this one here is most likely a generation 5 Acetec pump, but I won't open it just to check as it works fine. Regardless of who made the pump, if it has completely failed or is making an unacceptable amount of noise, it might be a good idea to see if you can source a brand new one or a used replacement as they are not that expensive. I've bought a number of them from various brands over the years and replaced them in other AIOs. Just make sure first it is economical to do so, since in some cases probably not worth the fix. For a unit like this, that may well be the case, but for a nice 360mm RGB AIO, it will most likely be worth your time and effort. Sometimes the screw go into metal inserts, but depending on the version they might go into plastic, so all the precautions from earlier still apply. And that's it! It's ready to go back into your system. Don't panic if the pump makes a funny noise for a couple of seconds first time you plug it back in. It's perfectly normal as it needs to get all the bubbles out into the radiator. No matter how well you think you filled it, there will always be bubbles.